All right, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome to the Zoe system demo. This is the demo for the 2.6 release. So I'm sharing my agenda. We have a couple of squads that will be presenting, or, or maybe just one squad, two squads. And um, we'll get started. First presenter will be Sean. Go ahead, Sean. Sure. All right. Can you see? Yes. Doc site. Oh, sorry. No, not the doc site. That's oh, no. Slack. Let me give you the other screen. Yes. Now, can you see the doc site? I think so. Okay, great. So what we're looking at here is the 2.6 documentation that just went out. And what I wanted to cover is not a new feature, but rather a new documentation of an existing feature. Um, in 2.5, we released code that will allow the ZWE program on the server install to be able to have extensions installed and managed uh, in a remote repository instead of a local one. Um, in in 2.4 and below, whenever you would install an extension, that extension would already need to be on your mainframe, and then you just point to the directory. But with 2.5 and onwards, um, there is this ability to point ZWE at a registry of your choice, and then it would query the registry to see if the extension that you want is available for download there. So the place that you find that in the documentation is if you go into the installation roadmap, um, this, this page will guide you through the steps of installing the Zoe servers. And after you install the Zoe runtime and initialize, uh, an instance, you get to the customizing section and this stage five here is, Hey, you know, do you want to install extensions? So, um, this page here on installing extensions, you'll see it at the uh, bottom of this, um, section here on configuring this used to be in the extender section of the documentation but it's really something for anyone to do so we moved it over to here because this is about how you interact with the zwe commands and um first of all this page has been simplified because it had some duplication um in the reference section of our documentation uh the ZWE help commands are auto-generated uh, from our code. So instead of listing every single parameter here, if the parameters can simply be explained by the help, um, a lot of these sections here, upgrading, enabling, and disabling, et cetera, uh, we just say more information about this can be found on the reference page. And you go there, and then you see all the tables and examples and stuff. So... This page got a little bit easier to read, um, but the new part of this page is really that uh, when you get to certain commands here, it will say, hey, you know, if you want to upgrade a component, this is a new command in 2.5 and onward, is that um, this command, uh, it says here, has a special feature that only works when you're using a component registry. So there's a link here over to the component registry. And uh, this will be in the extend part of the documentation. I just uh, had a, I, I forgot to put it in like the sidebar. So I made a pull request for that this morning. So you should see it in the extending part soon, but you can get to it from the uh, uh, component management page anyway. So this page here is all about the package registries and it explains what is a package registry. Um, basically it says that the component package registries are on-premises or remote storage, which contains Zoe components. And so we clarify here that we really mean extensions. And at the moment we primarily mean server extensions, but although this page doesn't cover what would happen on clients, uh, like like the CLI, uh, hopefully this page ex uh, explains what it does so that the CLI might have its own story in the future. In any case, um, 
what's really going on here is that there are many types of package managers in the world and PM being one of them. And package managers can store um, programs of any of any type, really. And some package managers are opinionated on what types of programs can be held. NPM traditionally is for Node.js code, but a lot of them can be persuaded to store really anything. And so uh, when you review the list of things that a package manager does, they uh, have quite a bit of overlap with what the ZWE command does for installing extensions. So really, we just made a bridge between the two. And um, what makes mm. a component package registry different from a, a run-of-the-mill package manager is really just that the contents need to be something that Zoe can understand to be a component. So... We have some examples here where we show sort of the before and after on this page where we say, okay, if you wanted to install an extension without <clears> using <throat> the package registries, you would run ZWE components install name of my extension dot packs with your Zoe config script. And then we go on to explain, okay, why, why does this have shortcomings? Well, you must first have downloaded that extension and put it on your mainframe and, um, if there are dependencies that that extension has, Zoe doesn't know about it. So it could still fail at runtime. You need to read the documentation. But if you were to use a package registry instead, we can solve both of those problems. Here's an example of using a package registry. You can see here that instead of listing the name of an archive, I just list the name of an extension. And we explain here what it does when it sees that is it says, oh, this isn't a file. I should search in a registry to see if that is something that I can download. And we have a note here because security is important to us that um, because this means that you are downloading something, you must trust the place that you were downloading from. And so we recommend that you use on-premise registries rather than cloud registries. Um, now, at the bottom of this page, we actually have suggestions on how to set one of those up. So if a, if a user wanted an on-premises registry, it can be made. Um, but what we also explain here is that registries are of certain types. And so NPM is a type of registry. Um, there might be others in the future. And on this page, we do explain how a developer can add additional registries down the road, something that's not NPM. This section here, making your own handler, is how you would tell Zoe how to speak the language of a different registry. So that this, this part's kind of all extender stuff, but the rest of the page is user stuff. Um, oh, actually, no, this is extender stuff too. This is about... Uh, given a package registry like NPM, how do you package an extension into that so that ZWE can handle it when it downloads it? So we talk about packaging guidelines here. Um, but I guess the the important thing for users is just, you know, any ZWE components command can utilize the package registry we have install uninstall search upgrade and uh yeah those are the commands and with these commands they all have dry run parameters so if you want to see if something's available for download without actually downloading it you can run the dry run command and it will show you what would have happened without actually committing to it um so if you want to use the package registry stuff, it's opt-in. Um, we actually have our own Zoe one. Um, the Zoe artifactory <laughs> that we use to deliver um, Zoe itself also has its own NPM registry. And so we can put content on there and then users can download from there. And we, we've actually started to do that already. Uh, I think I need to update the URL for this because this was just an example, but we will have an official one here. 
um, what people need to do to turn on this feature is basically they need to go into their zoe.yaml and they need to define a section like this example. They need to say, where is the registry that they want to use? If they don't do that, then they're operating purely in local mode, which is kind of the backward compatible stuff. Um, if they have multiple registries, like company A wants you to buy their product in order to get access to their registry, company B has a different registry, that can be done too. Um, but they really need to be of the same type because you're going to confuse Zoe if you're mixing NPM with something else, most likely. Um, and also dependencies. If you have uh, product A depends on product B, both of those products need to be in the same registry because when you do a command to manage a component, uh, it can only search within the registry that you specified to check for dependency resolution. But the way that dependency resolution does work is whenever you do a command, install, uninstall, upgrade, it's going to ask the package manager what to do about the given package name. Uh, and if the package manager says, oh, by uninstalling that extension, these other two extensions are no longer needed because they were installed as dependencies, then it's going to automatically remove three extensions instead of just one. Or the opposite of if you're installing something and it has two dependencies, you're going to end up with three new things installed. So it is more convenient in that way. Um, so we will have a link here to the to the Zoe registry uh, once I remember what that is. Um, but I think most uh, secure mainframe shops are going to want to set up their own registry. And so, like I said, we were using JFrog Artifactory as an NPM registry. And so we have a link here. If people want to do the same, if, if they have an Artifactory and they want to set one up, there's a link on the Artifactory website about how you set up an NPM registry. Um, when I was doing my testing, I just wanted something that I could set up on my own laptop. And so I found another thing out there called Verdaccio. And that one's just like a Docker container that acts like a simple web server. And so that's another thing that you can use. I don't really know an exhaustive list, but those are like two suggestions that we put in the doc. This was based off of the um, the monthly survey on our website when we asked people, what package registries do you use? And do you want education on them? And basically people did want education and um, it seemed like uh, people were either already using NPM or already using Artifactory. And so it seems like we picked a good fit for having our first component package registry uh, support B for NPM. Um, so yeah, I guess that's really all to say on this. I'll post the link in the chat so people can read more of this on their own time. But basically, the idea is that um, if you have a server extension, you can package it in this particular way, and you can upload it to an NPM registry such as Zoe's own Artifactory. And um, Additionally, if you want to put something else in that registry, it is possible. You know, you could put a CLI package in there. It just needs to be named or namespaced in a way that's not going to confuse the users as to what's a server component and what's a client component, I suppose. Um, maybe that's a, uh, a plan for the future is to make uh, an overarching way to explain if a component has both server and client bits or so on so that really we could have one format rather than two I, I don't know about that but as is it's really just an npm registry that we put content of a particular shape in in order for um our existing tooling to be able to handle whatever gets downloaded so um 
there will be a webinar later this year, I believe, um, that I will do a demo of this on. Um, I believe, yes, at the very bottom of this page, there's actually a presentation and recording that I gave during the technology prototype. So if you want to see it live, although it's a little bit raw because it was a prototype during that time, there there is a recording on that at the bottom of this page too. Um, so uh, are there any questions on this? Okay, and I'll just note, um, this is what we were calling essentially the App Store, but uh, when people say App Store, they usually mean a nice UI, and uh, there's no UI for this yet. This is solely empowering our existing command line tools. Um, some in the community have expressed desire to work on a UI, and so we might see that in the future. Uh, I sure hope so. Yep, it's on the roadmap. Great demo, Sean. Thanks. Okay, I don't hear any of the other questions, so I guess you're all done, Sean. Thank you very much. Yep, thank you. Okay, so moving on, the next person will be Andrew and he will be presenting bug fixes in version 2.6. Thanks, Nick. Let me just uh, share my screen real quick. All right. Hopefully you can see my screen. Yes. Okay, thank you. So, hi, I'm Andrew Harn, member of the CLI squad, and we briefly wanted to address a few of the bug fixes that were included in Zoe version 2.6. Um, a handful of these uh, bug fixes were made uh, as community requests and were upvoted by the community. So we've decided that it would be a good idea to briefly um, go over these in the system demo. Um, the first three um, bug fixes we have here are purely on are mostly on the CLI side, followed by um, five for the extenders to make uh, either a couple little things a bit easier um, or to resolve various issues that we've found. So briefly, um, I'll go over this. Um, we noticed on on the um, files compare um, set subset of commands that a lot of our um, file comparisons were showing that every line was uh, was showing as different between ZOS and local files, particularly on Windows systems. Um, we traced that down to file encodings um, with line endings uh, on Windows um, and thus we've changed our APIs slightly so that we do not look at line ending encodings uh, for the compare commands as to prevent false positives based on those uh, discrepancies between the different operating systems. Um, for daemon mode, we had a small issue where if the data buffer coming back from the coming to the daemon um, processing the command output was of an exact uh, length, the daemon on Windows would close the pipe before the daemon client was available to uh, verify that communication had ceased. That caused an error where the return code um, for the command would not match what the user was expecting, even if the command com completed successfully and communication would cease causing an error message to appear in particularly in this case, downloaded data sets, which would then render the uh, data set contents um, either invalid or render them incorrect uh, for what 
should be pulled down from the mainframe. Um, that was fixed. Um, and again, this was a purely Windows change. Um, plugin validation, there have been some plugins um, in the past that have wanted to introduce commands that use chained handlers, using handlers from other commands to perform a very specific task. Our validation never checked those commands to see if they had those chained handlers and instead looked to see if it had a classic v1 handler, um, which would simply execute a, a, a set of instructions. Um, so we have enhanced the validation APIs to take care of that and actually check to see if we want to run multiple handlers instead of just one. The remaining things here are simply uh, for extenders who are looking to extend the CLI either through plugins or uh, using these OE SDKs. Um, we found that V1 profiles were failing to load um, if a schema file had been defined, but a profile had not, um, we were trying to load um, files and uh, needed to wrap a failure in a try catch block. And we have since fixed that. We've exported a few additional um, APIs so that uh, extenders can more easily use and create their own implementation for credential storage. Um, there have been some discussions previously and that are ongoing to try and integrate a Kubernetes credential manager into the CLI um, as a plugin. And so these enable uh, that kind of use case to be completed and also enable other third parties to, or ourselves to create additional authentic or additional secure credential storage endpoints in the future. Um, we had a small bug that affected uh, one of our extenders where our write file async uh, function was throwing an error. We found that um, in, an up in essence, this was a synchronous function calling an asynchronous function. So the error would not be caught even if an individual attempted to catch it. And we have since changed the function to be asynchronous as it should have been. And finally, in our type doc, we have more clearly articulated that the git pro default profile function um, will return null if there are no profiles of a particular type. Um, as I said, a lot of these enhancements were requested by community members, and we appreciate uh, all the issues filed against the uh, all of our various uh, repositories. And hopefully we should have some good enhancements and bug fixes again for 270. But we just wanted to address this to make the community aware of these fixes, as some of these were highly upvoted. All right, any questions for Andrew? Okay, thank you, Andrew. Moving on then, the next presenter will be Tim, Timothy, and he's gonna be talking about enhancements in version 2.6 part one. All right, thanks Nick, I'll share my screen. Uh, hopefully uh, you can see it. Yes. So I'll be uh, 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 presenting for the Azoya Explorer Squad. Um, uh, I'll just uh, uh, start off by going straight to a, a, a demonstration of some of the new enhancements that we've added. So uh, first of all, we've added uh, multi-select support for the hide profile command. Um, over time, we have gradually been adding multi-selection support uh, to more commands in Azoya Explorer. And what that means is uh, that you're able to select multiple items here in the a tree and perform a single action on them uh, with just a one click. So uh, in this case, for the uh, hide profile command, uh, 
the functionality that has already been present is that you're able to right click on a single profile and say that you would like to hide it and it will disappear from the list. But now with this enhancement, you're able to select multiple all at once. So for example, if I want to delete all three of these or not delete, uh, sorry, to, uh, uh, to just hide them rather, then uh, I'll be able to do that with a single click. And that was functionality that was not possible before. Um, an additional enhancement that we made was uh, to add uh, support in VS Code um, to have uh, JSON-C syntax highlighting for a Zoe a team config file. So uh, uh, Zoe CLI and Zoe Explorer uh, have both already uh, supported uh, having JSON files that contain comments. So that is nothing new. But uh, what we uh, were previously missing was uh, uh, basically providing information uh, to BS code to let it know that the comments uh, should be supported. And so the behavior that you would see in the uh, past is what I have here, where uh, if I open a Zoe config JSON file at the bottom of my screen here, you can see that the language is showing as just JSON. And JSON by default does not support comments. Uh, that would require the JSON C superset, which stands for JSON with comments. And then uh, as you can see here, uh, if I were to like, I, I hover over any of these uh, comments, uh, VS Code is telling me that they are are are, are not permitted and they're all uh, like underlined uh, here with the red squiggly showing us that it thinks there's some sort of error. So uh, if I just uh, close this file now and go ahead and open it again, uh, that issue should be fixed. And that's because uh, Zoe Explorer uh, now provides information to VS Code to tell it that uh, any file that has Zoe uh, config JSON in the name, whether it's uh, just uh, a regular Zoe config file or also a Zoe config user JSON, those will be detected now as JSON with comments, as you can see here. And so this allows me to have the comments uh, without VS Code complaining. So whether you want to add just like notes in your configuration, if you want to comment out uh, individual properties or even entire profiles with a block comment like this, uh, those are all things that, as I said before, uh, were already supported, but now uh, VS Code is also uh, like happy with them. And then uh, one more thing I want to cover, um, a small enhancement that we made we reduced the size of our VSIX bundles. So a VSX files uh, are essentially uh, uh, the way that the VS code extensions are packaged and distributed. And uh, by uh, addressing some uh, technical debt and uh, 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 removing some extra files, uh, we were able to reduce the size, which should hopefully improve the installation experience. If uh, at install time, uh, if VS Code has a smaller file to download and extract, that should hopefully make the install faster and just the overall experience uh, better. And so as you can see here for Zoya Explorer, we were able to reduce the size pretty significantly. Uh, it went from over two megabytes to just 738 kilobytes, a 64% decrease. And then the FTP extension also saw a smaller uh, decrease, but uh, its size uh, decreased as well. And uh, that's all for the enhancements uh, I wanted to present. Um, are there any questions? Um, if not, I'll turn it over to my teammate Trey to show some uh, 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 some additional enhancements in Joy Explorer that we made. All right. Thanks, Timothy. Going to share my screen. All right, uh, hopefully everybody can see my screen. Yes. All right, great. Hi, everyone. I'm Trey Yelovich, a member of the Zoe Explorer squad, and I'm going to demonstrate two additional enhancements that were introduced in version 2.6 of Zoe Explorer. So the first enhancement that I'm going to demonstrate is a confirmation dialog that has been added to the submit jobs feature. This has been added as a safety measure to prevent users from accidentally submitting jobs uh, to their mainframe machines that can be potentially uh, negatively impactful on their machine. So uh, let me demonstrate this by going to my user account. So by default, the uh, confirmation dialog is set to all jobs by default. So when I go to submit one of my own jobs, you will now see a confirmation dialog 
that confirms whether you want to submit the following job. However, if I change this option to other user jobs and I go to submit my job, you will see that the confirmation dialog has disappeared and it will automatically submit jobs that are your own. Now, let me go to another user account to demonstrate this in action. If I go to run a job that belongs to another user, you will still see that this confirmation dialog will appear. This prevents you from running other users' jobs unintentionally. And finally, there's an option to set it to your jobs. If you set it to just your jobs, when you go to submit another user's job, it will also submit that job without a dialog. All right, so moving on to the second enhancement that has been added to Zoe Explorer version 2.6. Um, this uh, adds error handling to the Zoe config watcher. And that way, whenever you go to launch Zoe Explorer or make changes to your config, it will inform you if there are problems parsing it. So a common problem that we found for some users is that they have a comma missing from say the property structure here. So if I demonstrate that by removing this comma and saving the file, you will see that there is now an error dialog that pops up in the bottom right corner with an option to show the config. So for a user in this situation, they wouldn't have this config opened, but they will still see this error in the bottom right corner. So if they click show configuration, it will take them to the config that has the culprit. This should hopefully make it more convenient for users to adjust their configs when they have problems loading them within Zoe Explorer. All right, and that's it for the enhancements that I was going to demonstrate. Are there any questions? Quick question on what you just showed was, will it take you to the, the area that is causing the issue necessarily or just inside the config file? So currently it will just take you inside of the configuration file, but okay. it is able to determine which configuration is the culprit, whether that's your global configuration or a project level configuration in this instance where I'm in a test workspace. Okay. Thanks, Trey. That's that's great. Um, and then I had a question on the confirmation dialog. Sure. Um, and maybe uh, this is this is sort of related to the multi-select. Uh, is a user able to multi-select jobs and submit multiples? And I'm just wondering if that's if that's true. How will the dialog respond to that? Uh, currently, I don't believe multi-select has been added for submit job. Uh, to be quite honest, I haven't actually tried doing the, or replicating this scenario, but I can try to uh, confirm this here. Yeah, so currently in version 2.6, we don't have support for multi-select submit job. Um, but if this is added in the future, then we will definitely make sure that this confirmation dialog is added, uh, at least for each job, if not um, as a batch submission for um, multiple jobs that have been selected. Got it. Okay, thank you. And uh, no problem. Pavel, I have one more question. To the previous scenario, when you were able to uh, show that uh, dialogue, uh, has it sense to uh, maybe on future updated the way that there will be possible as well to select multiple scenarios when I want to have the confirmation like a table, like select all, select just my jobs and so on? Because to me, it was like that you could select just one line from, from that setup. What I want to have confirmation about. Uh, sure, so if I understand this correctly, um, this would be a request to add like more granularity as to what jobs you want to have a con confirmation dialog for? Yes, yes, yes. For me, it would be more sensible that I would have like ticker for each each type, like so for all of them, or just um, that I could pick more than just one one type for the confirmation. Sure. Um, so at this time, this has not been implemented. It It's just checking to see who the owner of the job is, but mm -hmm. I definitely appreciate the suggestion. And I think that's something that we could um, definitely implement um, in the future. So, okay, thank you. Yep, thanks. Not sure if the question is applicable, but um, in that uh, dialogue, how does it, uh, or or is it translated to different languages? Uh, it the 
error that is being displayed is localized, so it should be translated in two different languages. Um, I don't believe any translations have been added, but I think that is a part of the localization. So, um, okay. So, so it sounds like you're saying it's it's enabled. So if we if we included the translation, it would work. Yes. Yes. Correct. Okay. All right, any other questions? All right, that's uh, the items on the agenda. I'll just open it up. Are there any other topics anybody would like to talk about or demonstrate? Okay, all right, if there's nothing else, then it sounds like we can uh, end the call for today. Thanks everyone for joining and for those that presented. Have a nice day. Thank you. Thanks. Great job, everybody. Thank you. Great job. See ya.